Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today we're going to talk about what is freedom. As uh, usual, we're going to start with a 15-minute meditation. Uh, we're going to do a simple one. Um, those of you who've been with me, you know the drill. Uh, explain what we're going to be doing for those of you who are new with me. We're just simply going to do um, turning our attention inwards and looking for the source of our thoughts. If you turn your attention inwards and look for where your thoughts come from, where do they come from? And you go one step beyond that and you will enter into the silence you will find this place which is absolutely still and silent and it requires zero effort without really trying to quiet your mind you dive into silence all you have to do is bring your attention to where the source of your thoughts coming from that place so we'll go ahead and do that just close your eyes take a deep breath and relax into this moment and without really trying simply look within look for the source of your thoughts look for the observer the one who is aware of the thoughts, the one who is aware of the feelings. There, is, there must be something that doesn't change, which is aware of what's changing. You bring your attention in that direction and keep your focus there. Just simply don't concern yourself with your thoughts. No matter what happens, what kind of thoughts you're gonna have, allow them to be, don't try to stop your mind. Let the thoughts come and go and simply ignore them. Don't put your attention on them.
Just simply keep your attention on the source of your thoughts. You don't need to do a mantra and you don't need to do any visualization. Just simply stay still and keep your attention on one point. Simply just hang out here with yourself without really trying to accomplish anything. Hang out in this moment with yourself. And be aimless, no goals, not trying to get anywhere or accomplish anything, simply being here, suspended in the air in this moment. Open and available for whatever wants to come to you. And we will see what happens.
slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. So today we're talking about what is freedom, uh, which is a great subject. Um, different people view freedom differently. Um, I share with you what I used to think what freedom was. And I used to think that freedom was having as much money as I would like to have. I can travel to anywhere I would like to go. Uh, I don't have to work or answer to anybody. Um, I can buy anything I want. I can sleep with anyone I want. I can um, wander around and uh, get it drive whatever car I would like to have. And basically, um, we're talking about the worldly stuff that average people think that freedom will, will give to them. However, at one point, I did get everything I wanted. And, uh, and, at, and it was interesting because I found myself very depressed, even though I, I finally got to everything I wanted to get to. And what happens is that when we get the object of our desire, uh, we finally get it. And that will give us a short-term pleasure. For a short period of time, we are happy that we got what we want. But that happiness is not going to last very long. There is another, something else comes. And then we're desiring a new thing. And as you get what you want, what happens is also the fear comes that you may be losing it. So there's always this element of fear of losing your belongings, your status, where you're at in society, uh, your position, um, whether you have a contract or you maybe you're an actor, maybe you're a model, maybe you're extremely wealthy, uh, you have your children, you got your partner, and now you're worried about that something may happen. Your partner may leave you to go with somebody else. Um, your children, you're worried about them, that they may be kidnapped because you're very wealthy. Uh, there's always something's going to come up for you. And ultimately, uh, we all suffer from the this element that you may uh, develop some kind of health issues or maybe you get cancer and whatever happens and uh, you lose your health and eventually you may die young and not be able to enjoy what you have acquired. So as far as I'm concerned, freedom is not in the... Um, having the material stuff in life and be able to do whatever you want to do. I mean, that's a wonderful thing to have, but that's not freedom. Freedom is to be really free of your mind, to be free from worry, from anxiety, from depression, from the fear of losing things the fear of death, 
the feel, fear of old age, uh, fear of sickness, fear of being uh, left out and being lonely at the end of the day, that your kids will leave you and your friends will leave you and you're left out. That's where it, what we want to focus. We want to focus on having a free mind. And in order to have a free mind, we have to get to this place that we recognize that as long as we're identified with our thoughts, as long as we're identified with our emotions, what we feel, and as long as there is this strong identification with the body, the meat, that I am this, then there is no freedom. You are in captivity and you're, you may have everything that you, th you desire, but you're in a golden prison because fear is haunting you, some sort of fear. And fear is a thought and it's an emotion. But mainly, it all starts with thoughts. So the thought of losing things. And that keeps you in captivity. So if you really want to be free and, and open your wings and fly, is you have to go beyond the thinking mind. You have to find this place within yourself, which is quiet, which is still, which is not concerned with what is going on in the world, what is going on in your surrounding, what is going on in your body, what is going on in your mind. You have to find this place. And... As long as you have not found this place within yourself, then you're trapped into this karmic will. And the mind will project, will keep projecting this world as if this world is real. And, uh, and to those who are very much identified with their mind, this world is very, very real. It's very real and it's very frightening. And it's events that are happening are very real. They're really happening. Things are happening. There's hurricanes, there's earthquakes, there's financial instability. There's an invasion of another country invading your land and taking over. And it's a very, very real. You feel it. And it's very frightening. But those few that have awakened to their own true nature and they, became, they become free, they become free of the maya. The maya is the illusion. And their work began with themselves. They began to recognize that what they're thinking is not who they are. Okay, pay attention to this again. What you're thinking is not who you are. It's a bundle of thoughts passing through your mind and you have to begin to dive back into your own place to your own center otherwise you're not going to become free from this is to look at the thoughts that are passing through your mind simply looking at them simply being aware of them, but not being identified with them. And 
when I say this is because you don't have a choice. You can't not be aware of the noise in your mind. No matter what you do, you hear it. It is like going on. Even when you're sleeping at night, you're hearing it. And that's, you call it dreaming. But the mind is active. And it's doing its thing, whatever that is. But at one point in your life, you have to decide and become really determined that I want to come to the bottom of this and I want to be free. I want freedom. And freedom from suffering. So not suffering anymore. To free yourself from suffering. And that suffering is happening here. It's happening in your mind. That suffering happening from an identification. You're identifying with a person having this deep belief that you are someone or you may call yourself I'm a human being and believing that you are separated from totality. You're separated from the whole. There's a separation. There's a sense of separation that you are not a part of all. And in this place of feeling isolated and sensing this separation, before you are vulnerable and things can happen to you, you could be hurt and you could you could be dismembered and you could be left out and you can be broken because again you're really identifying with the person a person separated from totality but luckily through meditation and luckily through the right guidance we at one point in our evolution of consciousness we get a glimpse and that has happened to all of us different time in our lives you get a glimpse of your eternal self you get a glimpse of the truth of who you are and you get a glimpse of peace. You get a glimpse of silence. Is when you take your attention back. And you identify with the truth of who you are. And all of a sudden, as if the entire world, this world, this chaos that is happening continuously around you, it stops. As you're diverting your attention inwards, the chaos stops and you get a glimpse of yourself. You get a glimpse of silence. And in that moment of getting a glimpse of yourself, peace comes. Tranquility comes. It's, it's warm. It's protected, it's silent, it's very still. All of a sudden, the world stops and you come to this place. And you begin to experience peace of mind because there is no mind. And when there is no mind, you begin to experience true love real love and unconditional love you can call it bliss you feel blissed out you feel complete you feel and you get a glimpse of what is and normally you tell yourself this is it 
wow, I want this. I want to be in this place all the time. I want to stay here. And it may happen for a duration of time. And then the mind comes back. So the mind comes and it sucks your consciousness. It sucks your awareness back into the world of duality, back into the world of Maya. And everything becomes very real again. So in the beginning, you may get a glimpse of this and with the help of your guru, with the help of your spiritual teacher, your guides, your higher self, you're being guided home. And somehow you come across this information, somehow, for some reason, at one point in your life, and you're ready, your ears are open, your heart's open, your eyes are open, and you hear this. You may have heard it before, but it just passes through. You're not catching it. And nothing I'm telling you is new. You've read it in different books. You've heard it from maybe different teachers, but there is the timing has to be right. At the right time, it hits, there's a home run, and it sinks in. Prior to that, you may hear it a million times and it won't do anything for you. But when the time become, the time is ripe, then you hear it. And when you hear it, it sinks in, something shifts in your life, something changes. There is a quality to it and that you haven't experienced before. You sense the value. You feel like there is something here. I don't exactly know what that is. I have no idea why I'm drawn to these teachings. I don't know why I keep going back, but something's really right. And you come back and you listen again and you try it again. You may not understand it fully. What is Zarathustra talking about? What do you mean that the world is Maya? The world is illusion. What do you mean that it's not real? I don't understand my experience that everything is so real. And I have to take care of these different things. And if I don't, my life is going to fall apart. What do you mean it's not real? That can't be it. But something inside you keeps pulling you back. It's calling you. And that's calling. It's the invitation of coming back home, coming back to the truth of who you are, coming back to freedom inner peace, inner freedom, coming in that direction. And that direction leads you to where there is no mind, leads you to freedom, leads you to silence. And when you are able to develop this and you slowly, slowly find the path through meditation. And you follow and you're sincere and you do the work because it takes time and it needs some work. You have to understand that it's thousands of years and millions of years of the false identification. Millions of years of identifying with Maya, identifying with illusion. Millions of years 
of believing a deep belief that you're separated. A deep belief that your mind, your thoughts are yours. You're the one who's thinking. It's a deep belief within you that what you're feeling is you. You are sad, you are happy, you are depressed, you are angry. You buy that, you believe it. Because naturally you're feeling it in your body. So you buy it. But that's not it. That's not who you are. You're simply observing the change of emotions. The emotions come and go. And you have to develop this attitude of denying it, declining it. Developing an attitude of declining your own thoughts, denying them. They're there and you just declining them. You don't pick them up. You don't buy it. That's going to take time. Because for thousands of years, and in this life, you've been doing it over and over again. And naturally, you're used to doing it. Because this is the only thing you believe it is. You have the right to feel that way, to have that attitude. Because from the time you were born until now, no one around you ever said something different from when you remember your teachers your parents your family everybody around you is doing the same thing you have no role model nothing to compare this to so when everyone around you in your life is believing in one thing and doing the same thing, you have no reason to doubt it because you have nothing to compare to. Everybody's doing the same thing. But everybody is suffering. Everybody is in fear. Everybody goes through anxiety. Everybody's worried that they will die. Everyone's worried that they would be left out. Everyone is worried that they may lose their assets, their money, their, what's in their bank account, what possessions they have. They will get old. They will be left out. They will be lonely. It's a huge fear of being lonely, being left out. So you don't have really a choice except to think and feel the same way as everybody else does until grace comes to your life. Because down deep, you know something's not right. Down deep, you're not happy. You're suffering from something. Something's bothering you. Something's not right. And down deep, you know that. You know that there is something more than what the eyes meet. There is something more than what you've been told something more than what you have studied in your religious studies. The stories you've been given, the stories you've been told, you know there is something more than that. You know it down deep in the core of your being. And that 
pulls you on this path, brings you in this way. It's a calling. It's a very, very tiny voice, but keeps calling you. It's nagging. And no matter what you do, you can silence it. You cannot quiet this place in this voice. There isn't enough drugs that you can take to silence this voice. There isn't enough alcohol that you can drink to silence this voice. There isn't enough sex that you can perform to get rid of it. Something down deep inside you is calling you back, calling you home. So what you're looking for, I'm sharing it with you, is already within yourself. It's already in you, okay? It's not anywhere outside of you. You've looked all over the world and you haven't found it because it's not there. You can't find it. It's not in India. You can go to any ashram you want in India and it's not there. It's not in Tibet. It's not if you shave your head and wear a mala and wear an orange robe, you're not gonna get it. It's not if you change your diet. It's not in any kind of action or a place in the world, or it's not in any guru or teacher who can give it to you because it's impossible. You already have it inside yourself. So what you need to do is stop. Simply stop the madness. This madness, craziness that you're involved in, you have to stop it at one point. Just stop. Stop. And turn your attention inwards. I can't just make it more simple than this. I have no language to explain it any more simply than I am explaining it. You simply have to stop whatever you're doing, wherever you're looking, whatever technique you're using, you're gonna have to stop everything and completely disengage from whatever news you're hearing from the outside. You're gonna have to shut out the noise, the other noise, and disengage from that too. Become completely ignorant to the world news and events and your surrounding your family dramas or whatever, completely put it away and stop. Ignore whatever you're hearing in your head and turn your attention inwards. And look within for that which does not change inside you. Something here is not changing 
That's observing change. What is noticing change? When you're sitting here in your room and you look around, how do you notice changes? How do you notice passages? How do you notice your thoughts? How do you notice your emotions and feelings? How do you notice your body? From where do you see these kind of things? Look for that place inside yourself. Seek that place within yourself. That's where the gem resides. That's where the jewels are. That's what you're looking for, my friend. Right inside yourself. Nowhere else. That's where you're going to find it. And that's not thinking. If you start thinking to find it, you're off the path. It's pre-thoughts. Before thoughts come, that's where it is. Look for that place. And once you discover this place, which is already inside you because it's calling you home, You discover what is always still and what is changeless. You discover the truth of who you are. The Atman. Your higher self, your own self, the observer, the watcher, the one, your true soulmate, your true love. And as your attention diverts in that place and you get glimpses of it and touches of it, the quality of your life begin to change because now you're getting glimpses of silence. You're getting glimpses of stillness because we're talking about that which doesn't change. So that which doesn't change means it's always still. That which doesn't change means it has no thoughts. It observes thoughts, but it has no thoughts. It's always here. And when we talk about your eternal self, we're talking about this. We're talking about this, this place inside you and this place inside you has never been born and will never die the mind is not going to understand it the real you has never been born Right now, I'm talking to the real you. It's never been born. It's always been here. Because you can't really die. In order to die, you have to be born. But if you haven't been born, then you can't die. You've always been here. And you always will be here. And nothing can hurt you. Because the real you is not what you're thinking you are. What you're thinking you are, it's only a projection of your mind. It's created this story. It's an imagination. That's what is happening.
But of course, you can't understand it with thinking mind. Because thinking mind only works in a beginning and end. It works in time and space. It requires a beginning and an end. That's how it works. It requires duration. But the presence, who you are, which is completely free, doesn't have that. It simply is. And the mind can't understand what does it mean simply being. But when you dive back into your essence of who you are, into freedom, it's groovy. It's blissful. It's bliss beyond anything else. That's why you're pulled back to this. That's why you come for it. You come you keep coming back. Because you're getting taste of it. You're getting a taste of the real you. And it's very addictive because you want more. Because you know this is this is the real thing. Something inside you knows that this is the real thing because you're tasting freedom. So you want more. You want to stay in that place. Down deep, you know. You know what's up. So just keep focus. Keep doing the work. Keep your attention on this place. And everything will come to you. You don't need to worry about it. I have people come to me and say, Dvaratustra, I need to awaken. I need to awaken. I need to get enlightened. I need to become free. That's a busy mind going crazy. And I keep telling him the same thing. Mellow down and trust. Just stay quiet. Be quiet. Practice being quiet, being still. And everything will reveal itself to you. Because the same force, the same love, the same being that has brought you to this point, that has brought you to this information, will carry you on. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to panic. It's all taken care of. That's the beauty of it. Everything will reveal itself accordingly at the right time. When you're ready, you can relax into that. And you just keep doing the work and relax into it. It will come to you. It will get easier. Anybody has a question? You can raise your hand or you can write on the chat box. Hi, Anita. Yes. Um I uh, I want to refer to what you told so many times. Uh, this world is not real, and there is no others. And these things I can't uh, understand. This um, right? Yeah, it's hard for you to understand it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. You have, you have a yes. hard time. You have a hard time understanding that this world is not real. Yes, I can't, oh, okay. I can't understand the beginning also, I can't understand. What is the meaning not real? 
Right. Okay. Exactly. So let me ask you a question. When you sleep at night, right? And you're not dreaming. Have you ever slept that you don't have any dreams? Yes. Normally, I don't dream. I can't. Uh, I don't have any dreams. I think. So when you sleep, like normally at night, when you sleep, how long do you sleep? How many hours do you sleep? Um. I don't know. I I'm not sleeping in one stretch. I wake up many times in the night. I told you. And uh, now I will sleep about six hours, maybe six, uh, six, seven hours. Okay. So when you sleep, let's say you sleep for two hours before you wake up. Yeah. Okay. And that two hours, you have no dreams. Sometimes. Yeah. But I'm talking about when you don't have dreams. Yes. Right. So you put your head down and you're gone. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, nothing. And two hours after you wake up. Yeah. Okay. And then when you put your head down and you're gone, uh -huh. is there, is your house there when you put your head down? Is your body there? Is your problems there? Yeah. Or they disappear? When, no, they are there. When you sleep and you're not dreaming, you're aware of your home, your no, body. No, 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 no. And no. no. When you when you sleep and you don't dream, where where do things go? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no idea. No idea. So they're not there. Are they? Yeah. Because you're not there. Oh. When you sleep and you don't dream, correct? Mm-hmm. Are you aware of your body? No. No. What happens to your body then? It disappears, doesn't it? Mm hmm what happens to your home? You put your head down, you sleep, and you're not dreaming anymore. Your body disappears, and your home is not there either. And your problems, your pains and aches, your financial problems, or struggles, or relationship struggles, or whatever, everything disappears too. And then when you wake up and you remember who you are, then everything comes back. Yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's not the problems you need to get rid of. Maybe we need to get rid of you. Maybe if we get rid of you, then everything is solved. Uh-huh. <laughs> How can we do this? <laughs> yeah. You know, we're trying to solve the problems of the world, the economy, the ecosystem. We're trying to fix these things, but we can't. Uh-huh. But maybe we get rid of you, then there is no problem to solve. Oh. Everything is, is taken care of. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever tried that? No. Yeah, okay, good. So I'm, that's my suggestion. Let's see if we can get rid of you. Let's try that one time. We've tried to solve everything else. But it doesn't really work, you uh -huh. know, trying to solve the world's problems. Uh -huh. It doesn't really work. It just makes you more frustrated and more angry because uh -huh. whatever we fix, something else goes wrong. Yeah. We just were able to win a victory over 
having human rights, and then we find out that they're destroying and cutting all these trees in Amazon. Then oh. we try to stop them from doing that. Then they're killing all these animals in another region of the world. Now we're really angry about that and we're trying to stop that. Then we find out that they're mining somewhere in Africa and they're destroying something else. So there's always something is happening and we're trying to fix these things, but it keeps going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But what is the meaning this bird is not real? I want this, this sentence, I like to know what is the meaning of that? Right, okay. So what, what is real must always be here. What's real is that which is always here. Something that doesn't change, something that is always here. That is real. Real must be always here and not changing. If something is changing, then it can't be real because it's changing. Real does not change. It's always here. Look for that. And you can do a practice. For example, I understand in the beginning it's really weird because no one has ever told you that. Am I right? This is the first time you're really hearing it in this way. Yes. It's kind of, it's kind of strange, isn't it? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, it's kind of strange. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's let's just play a game. And you don't have to agree with me, but we're just going to play a little game, all right? Make believe, make believe game. You remember when you were a little girl, did you play make believe games? I with your know. friends, yeah. Like, you know, you're playing with your dolls or your toys and you're imagining a situation. You're playing doctor and nurse. You're yeah, yeah, playing, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? So yeah. you, you and your girlfriend would get together and play this game and mm -hmm. you made believe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you made believe this game, it was very real, wasn't it? Yes. It was very, very real. Same thing with this world. Start looking at it from this point of view that it's not real. Give, give it a try. Give it, give it an opportunity. That what if this world is not real? Then what am I afraid of? You start looking at it from that angle for the first time in your life. Okay, I'm going to look at this world as if it's not real. It's a part of an imagination. And then see what happens. Including all of its past, all of its history, everything that has happened, you just start looking at it as if it's an imagination and then see what happens to you. Yeah, it, it, huh? it loses, loses power, I mean. It starts to lose its power, exactly. It begins to lose its power. Exactly. You start looking at the world as this world is a projection of your mind your mind is projecting it, your family, your friends, your problems, your health issues, the economical problems, the political struggles, 
all of it, you start looking at it as if it's not real. And then you'll see what happens. Slowly, slowly, it's power that is really holding on you. All these, like a spider net, it begin to crumble and it begin to fall apart and it starts to lose itself. And your mind starts to become free. It's going to take a little bit of time. You have to work on it because it's brand new. This information is brand new to you. But as you work on it, you go deeper, it becomes much more interesting. Hi, Karen. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, I, I wonder about this karmic wheel. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what are you wondering about? Yeah, I'm wondering, you, you're saying that, uh, that you can get free of this karmic wheel, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. And then what is it that uh, you can be free of? What is it? Yeah, yeah. There, is the mind, there is this mind, there is this thinking, this imagination. That's imagining this world, imagining this, this girl with this body. And it keeps repeating another story. So after this body dies, this imagination continues and then it just recreates another story. So we call it the karmic wheel until freedom comes, until awakening starts to happen, until somebody here begins to recognize that maybe this is only a dream. Maybe it's not really happening. A dreamer is dreaming. And that's what we call waking up. You begin to question the reality. You begin to question this reality. Yeah, and then what? Well, you're really questioning it. You're not buying yeah. it anymore, you know? You're, you're examining it. How real is it? You start to examining it. You start to dive into it deeper to see if it's, how real is it? Is it real? You're questioning it. So as you're questioning it, you're investigating and you're going deeper into it for the first time in your life. It's being questioned. Its reality is being challenged. It was never challenged before. So it was very, very real. But now it's getting challenged. And then in that challenge, you be begin to discover things that you didn't know before. And that's what I'm inviting you to do. Because obviously by me telling you, it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't, you may say, uh, well, how could that be? Okay, that's planting, putting the first seed, planting a seed in there. But now we go deeper. Now I'm inviting you to challenge it inviting you to investigate it on your own. 
because you have to discover it for yourself. And the only way you're going to discover it is by challenging it. By saying, you know what? I want to look deeper into this. I'm not buying everything I see with my eyes and everything I'm seeing and I'm being told, I'm not buying it anymore. I want to challenge it. I want to go deep inside into it to see if it's real or not. If it's bullshit or it's real. So let's do that and see what happens. Okay? Let me ask you something. How do you know if anything has happened? For example, let's talk about our human history. How do you know that things up to 100 years ago really happened? How do you know that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, how, how do we know that things really happen? For example, we talk about Second World War. How do I know it really happened? What if it's just the whole thing is a story that since I was born, they're telling me stories or First World War or wars in the 18th century or 16th century? How do I know these things really happen? How do I know it for myself that they happen? I wasn't there. My dad wasn't, you know. I don't know of anyone who was there in 18th century that witnessed things to happen. I'm basically going by the historian and by the stories that I hear. And I accept them as real. But how do I know that? How can I examine it? I don't have any way to go back into time to find out what happened. So how do I know it really happened? How do I know it's not a story they're feeding to me? That's question things, question reality. Dive into it. Start questioning things. And you go deeper. And interesting things starts to pop. Yeah? Yeah. Now, now I'm kind of um, changing the subject. Okay. Uh, but... Um, I wonder about uh, the retreat in Sedona. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, yeah, I wonder, are we bringing our instruments? Or how, you, how do you think about this? You can, if you like. If you want to bring your rattles, or if you have a small drum, you want to bring it with you, you're welcome to do it. We will use our instruments. Um, of course, I'll have stuff, but uh, the little little stuff that is easy to carry, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our retreat in Sedona, it's going to be a powerful one. Yeah. Especially, I discovered, I didn't know, if a friend of mine who does astrology, she mentioned about... Uh, there's a major planetary alignment exactly around that time that we're doing the retreat in Sedona. And, uh, and it's huge. And I'm going to do a little research and come up with a link. There's a lot of articles about it on the Internet. So, but that's, it's ironic that it's exactly happening when we're having our retreat. So... Uh, somehow, intuitively, something inside me knew 
that that period of time is exactly the right time. So I'm very excited about it. I will do some research on it and I'll put a link on my Facebook and I'll, I'll email you all the link. Um, so we're going to be in Sedona in exactly perfect time. And, uh, and we're gonna open up this portal, this gateway, which Sedona is one of the most uh, powerful places on planet Earth. And for me, whenever I go to Sedona, I don't feel like I'm going to a geographical place on the map. For me, going to Sedona is always like a journey inside my own consciousness. I always feel like I'm traveling within my own psyche. And when I arrive in Sedona, it always feels like entering into this other dimension because the place doesn't even look like anything I've seen on planet Earth. So, uh, and I'm very, very happy that you're all coming to Sedona. I'm very excited about it. And uh, by the way, we still have two spots left for those of you, anyone who's interested to uh, join us at this shamanic activation retreat in Sedona. We still have two spots left. So feel free to uh, contact me if you have any questions regarding uh, this retreat. And uh, all the information is on my website, zaratustra.tv. You're welcome to look at it. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, next uh, academy, I'm wondering next week if it's going to be on uh, Thanksgiving Day. Let me check the dates. Next Wednesday is 27. No, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Okay, wonderful. So our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, uh, November 27th. Um, I look forward to seeing you. I'm going to, we have we're coming to the end of our, oh, we have still have a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to end our webinar. No. Okay. Well, it's nice to see you all. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, feel free to make it to put any comments, whether on Facebook or you want to email email us. Um, you will be getting a copy of this uh, recording, and also this recording is going to be on my podcast. It's Zaratustra 5D. I look forward to connecting with you next week. Thank you for joining us, joining me in. Many, many blessings to all of you. Namaste.